Hey friends, I feel like everyone knows the Duolingo bird. The Duolingo bird with the knife behind its back threatening if you don't complete a lesson today. And after a streak of about 400 or more days and finishing the Spanish Duolingo track, here's what I've learned. Duolingo, if you didn't already know, is a language learning platform that you can access on a mobile device, through an app, or on a computer through the website. I'm not going to talk about features too, too much because I know that software moves quickly and changes happen all the time, but I made a video talking specifically about the Duolingo stories a while back if you want to check it out, but spoilers, I recommend them. A couple of months back there was an update to Duolingo which restricted the way a user moves forward through the track. Previously there was a little bit more of a choice on what lesson you wanted to work on, but now there is one option if you want to move forward. I've heard good things about the update, I've heard bad things about the update, it's caused me a little bit of frustration personally, but ultimately it is very subjective and I'd recommend trying it to see if it's something that works for you. Maybe I'm just a bitter for never making it to the highest league, the diamond league, but I've convinced myself that ranking isn't that important. It is a flex, but it doesn't mean anything with respect to your fluency. The couple of times that I did try to reach a diamond league, it was really stressful, and this thing that was supposed to feel like a game didn't really feel like a game anymore. Like in Duolingo, when I play tennis, I can feel myself getting too competitive with other other people or getting mad at myself for making small errors, but when I force myself to laugh at myself, eventually it turns into real laughter and I feel better because it's just a game and it should feel like it. Let's talk about streaks. We're good! Streaky! Yeah. <laughs> I've got a streak of over 400 days. It is a bit of a flex, but I think the intention there was to try and make Duolingo a new habit so that you return to it and practice your language day after day. At this point, and I talk about it a little bit later too, but I'm kind of over it and I've been doing just the bare minimum to keep my streak going. On the mobile app, there are these ramp up challenges and they're different kinds week after week, but my favorite has been the matching one and only when I started using the free version of Duolingo did I realize that I had to pay the Duolingo digital currency of gems to play these ramp up challenges. So there's the free version of the app and the paid version of the app and the free version of the app has ads which can be blocked using ad blocker on the website or you can just swipe out of the app once you're done with a lesson because an ad will start after the lesson. I might be a little bit obsessive about avoiding ads though. Maybe you could just watch them. Another difference that I find interesting between the paid and the free version of the app is the idea behind personalized practice. In the free version, the practice is not personalized. So all of the questions that you're going to be asked could be from the very, very beginning of your Duolingo journey. Whereas for the paid personalized practice, these are going to be more of the recently asked questions that you missed. Oh shoot. I can go. Hello, um, are you outside? Okay, be right there. Wait. Okay, where were we? Communities, as far as communities go, there are two main ones that I use. One was this website called Duoplanet, which is a great resource and it's where I learned about the different currencies in Duolingo, gems versus lingots. They also have a ton of other information about Duolingo in general. The other resource that I used was Reddit. Reddit's community is alive and well. There are a ton of people sharing their art or sharing their streaks that they're proud of, commiserating over new features, or have language questions about the correct answer that Duolingo has given them. If you're just starting out learning a language, Duolingo is a platform that I would recommend. It's great for listening practice, it's great for reading practice, especially because not all languages are phonetically pronounced. And even later on, if you're interested in grammar practice, 
it's great for that too. That being said, in my experience, Duolingo has been a little bit too pedantic, uh, grammatically speaking, as I progressed in my language learning journey for Spanish. I do struggle with being a little bit of a perfectionist. Perfectionist, 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 perfectionist. Perfectionist, and so in the beginning, I was trying to get every single little thing right, but as my Spanish has improved, I'm learning still that it's not that important so long as I can communicate effectively and get my point across. Because Duolingo was being a little bit too pedantic for my taste, I tried to skip as many lessons as possible and be done with Duolingo, which being done doesn't mean that I'm absolutely fluent in Spanish. It is more of a completionist thing. Lately, I've been doing the absolute bare minimum of one lesson per day in Duolingo just so I could continue my streak up until I made this a video. So instead of feeling compelled to continue my Duolingo streak, I'm going to be taking a break for a while and continuing to practice my Spanish through journaling, looking up phrases and words as I need them, or reading in Spanish and figuring out what's being said through context clues. So thanks for watching. I hope this information was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll see you next time. Bye!